Okay. Um, well, uh, we've seen lots of different families of non positively curved spaces and, and groups uh, over the last week. Um, and today I want to talk a little bit about what are some potential ways of unifying these different families. Uh, so I'll start by noting this uh, picture that I've got on the board here. Um, so we've learned about some of these constructions um, and may maybe not, not all of them, but um, we know that thickening a cat's ear cube complex gives us a heligraph. Uh, um, it's also the case that if you take the heli hull of a quadrant complex, you'll get a heligraph. Um, C4, T4 um, and uh, C6 small cancellation complexes um, uh, also fit into um, um, quadric and um, systolic. Uh, so that's that's by a uh, well, there's a certain certain operation uh, that you can do on on these to turn them into uh, quadric or systolic complexes. Um, C3, T6 complexes can also be thickened uh, into uh, systolic complexes. Um, but uh, it turns out that all, all of these families that we have here, uh, they're one skeletons, they're, they're all weakly modular um, without any modification. They just, they just are. Um, and well, weakly modular graphs were introduced in metric graph theory world as a sort of big generalization of many, many different classes of, of uh, uh, graphs satisfying nice metric properties. Let me give the definition due to Shapoy and Bandelt. Gamma B, a um, graph without loops. So none of those or multi edges. Gamma is weakly modular if it satisfies the following two conditions for every k at least one. First one is called the triangle condition. Call that TC sub K for every edge XC and vertex P with uh, the distance between P and X equal to the distance between P and Z equal to K. There exists a vertex R neighboring X and Z such that, well, it's one step closer to P. So let me draw a, uh, a picture. I'll do that here, maybe. T, C, K. So we have our neighboring guys, X and Z. And then we have P at some distance K. And we're told that, we're told that there exists a vertex R that's one step closer. The first condition. Second condition is called the quadrangle condition. U C sub K for any path X Y Z and vertex P 
with uh, the distance between P and X equal to the distance between P and Z equal to P, uh, K. And the distance between P and the midpoint of the path Y equal to K plus one. So it's one step further away. There exists a vertex R neighboring X and Z that's one step closer to P. So the picture for that condition is this one. We have our X and our Z again, but they're the endpoints of a path of length two. We have Y in the middle. And they are X and Z at some distance K. And there exists then a vertex R that's one step closer to P and neighbors X and Z. And that's it. That's, that's the definition of a weekly modular graph. Um, are there any questions about this definition? A, a modular graph is one in which every triple of points has a median, but it doesn't have to be unique. And uh, such a graph, uh, such a graph doesn't have odd cycles, it turns out, and uh, it satisfies the quadrangle condition. So it vacuously satisfies the triangle condition. Any other questions? Yeah, actually, quadric, uh, and one skeletons of quadric complexes are, are actually hereditary modular graphs. They're precisely the graphs whose every isometric subgraph is modular. Um, interesting fact. Okay, um, well, I, I have an exercise for, uh, for all the mini courses. Prove uh, the, uh, you know, inclusions in the uh, diagram. Well, these, these ones. Okay, um, so what about higher dimensional cells? Um, well, we can go to level two at least, yes? X, Y, Z is a path of length two, X, Y, Z. Okay, well, let's talk about the two skeleton. Um, for a graph gamma, or what is the natural two skeleton here, the triangle square complex is the two complex obtained from gamma by gluing in a triangle along each embedded three cycle, those three cycles are always embedded, and a square along each embedded four cycle. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it, X of gamma. Okay, and there's a theorem of shallow pain, Chapoy, Irai, and Osida that the Triangle square complex of a weakly modular graph is uh, simply connected with quadratic isoparametric function. So that's that's some first bit of evidence 
beyond the nature of the definition that we have some kind of non-positive curvature here. So let's, let's talk about how this is proved um, to give us an idea of how these uh, TC and QC properties help us. So we take our cycle in X of gamma, and uh, we pick one vertex V in its image. And we're going to sort of, the idea is we're going to homotop everything towards that vertex. Okay. And the, the first thing we do is eliminate any uh, edges that are uh, equidistant to, to V. Okay, so we, uh, we apply the triangle condition. So that at most uh, doubles the length of our cycle. And, uh, and it requires a homotopping through at most a uh, linear number of triangles, okay? So um, we can sort of assume without loss of generality that uh, there are no such edges, okay? And then we proceed by induction on um, some complexity function phi of f, which is just going to be, uh, well, essentially, it's going to be the sum of the distances. Um, the sum over all vertices in the cycle of, well, I don't want, I don't want this to be negative, so I'm going to say max of zero and the distance between our base point v and uh, the image of you. Okay, so it's essentially the sum of the distances to the, to the base point, but um, um, shifted so that uh, this is zero precisely, precisely when um, our, our, our entire path is zigzagging between uh, V and its neighbors. So when that's right, when this is zero, um, that means that, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot a minus one. Otherwise, that's always just the distance. Okay, so sh shifted by minus one. So when this is zero, it means all the distances are either zero or one. And so um, our, our path without horizontal edges is just zigzagging back and forth between V and his neighbors. And um, so that's kind of the base case. And uh, the inductive step is um, find a vertex in the image uh, of maximal distance to the base point. That's going to give us a quadrangle condition kind of thing happening, right? Because the two neighbors have to be closer. We have no horizontal edges, and that's a max. And um, and then homotopping through uh, at most one square, might not be a square if this is a backtrack, uh, we, we could reduce the uh, complexity by at least one. So that tells us that we can homotop this, this guy um, at, a, at a cost of at most um, phi of f to a point. And phi of f, well, is less than or equal to uh, the length of C times the diameter of the image of C, uh, which is less than or equal to length of C squared, because well, F is one Lipschitz, and um, the diameter of C is at most half half its length. Okay, so that's you know that that that's. Gives us some idea of why um, why this this these conditions are are helpful. Um, are, are there any questions about about that? Doesn't it doesn't really matter? But I I I I, I mean, gluing in the triangles is enough. Um, but it doesn't really matter. Yeah. 
because right? you're simply connected anyway. And, and, yeah. that's, a, that's a good question, though. It might be more natural to, yeah, I don't know. Is Jeremy here? What's, 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 uh, how, how are things defined in, 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 in CCHA? I don't know. Uh, Donnie, you had a question? So the, uh, it seems to me that the simple examples of a graph that don't have this property are the pentagon and the hexagon. Is that right? Um, they, that's right. They don't have this property. Yeah. And is there a, a, another type of example that you make us sad that it doesn't have that, this property? Um, there are probably, there are probably lots. Uh, I, I, yeah, I don't have, and those are, those are good first examples. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't have a, a particular example to, to give you. Other, other questions? I think pro probably Jeremy's talk, he's going to talk uh, next week on uh, graphs with convex balls. And I think those are examples of places where you need Pentagon. It's uh, all right. Um, so that's a relatively easy theorem. Here's a, uh, a hard one. Um, let gamma be a graph without loops or multi edges. If gamma satisfies TC2, so that means just the case where K is equal to two, okay? You can detect that just by looking at balls of radius three. And QC2, and the triangle Square complex X of gamma of gamma is simply connected, then uh, gamma is weakly modular. Okay, so we have a, a, a local to global uh, characterization of uh, weakly modular graphs. More, more evidence in favor of, you know, more non positive curvature like properties. Okay, um, more difficult theorems. It's the theorem of, of, of Zach that the one skeleton of the AN tilde Hoxeter complex is, uh, is weakly modular for all N. Uh, and also A3 tilde buildings uh, are also weakly modular. This last result was extended by Hytel and Huang using C actions on lattices techniques. Um, so A and tilde, it proved that A and tilde buildings are weakly modular for all N. Uh, it also showed that Artin complexes of and till the Artin groups are weakly modular and weak. Cayley graphs of weak Gar side groups. Okay, and um, which there's um, there's lots of examples of, and um, the A and tilde uh, examples are quite, I, mean, I think particularly interesting because clearly they should be non-positively curved in some combinatorial way. 
Um, but I think they, they don't fit uh, as far as I know into, um, into other or into the, to the more standard notions of combinatorial non-positive curvature. Okay, um, but there's uh, a, a tremendous amount that we don't know about weakly modular graphs. And um, big burning question is, is there a natural family of higher dimensional cells we can give to uh, a weakly modular graph uh, to make it contractible. And uh, I mean, if you look at all the different kinds of cells that you already need for these subclasses, it kind of puts the some of the difficulty, uh, um, you know, makes clear some of the some of the difficulty in, in trying to do that. Um, and there and there are yet more families where, you know, S weakly modular graphs and um, dual polar graphs uh, that I don't know much about, which all have their own sort of families of appropriate uh, cells, and not, none of them are really. Um, compatible. Um, you know, has that been done for Heli graphs? For, for has, cells. yeah, yeah. Um, just just the the flag completion. Yeah, yeah. I mean, an another option would be take the injective hull, and I think you get something. Okay. Well, that's all I have to say about weakly modular graphs before we move on to the. Next topic, um, are there questions? Okay, so uh, let's talk about the strong percut property. Recall that quadric and uh, systolic complexes are characterized by a lack of uh, isometric cycles um, you know say long isometric cycles embedded in their one skeletons it's also a fact that if F is a one Lipschitz map from the circle S1, that's geodesic metric into uh, Euclidean space, of some dimension, uh, then there always exists a pair of antipodes, P, P bar in the circle, such that, um, well, here's the picture, there's F of P, there's F of P bar such that the distance in Euclidean space between their images is at most two divided by pi times um, half the circle length, which is uh, two divided by pi times their distance as antipodes in the circle. Um, 
Whereas on the other hand, uh, S1 isometrically embeds quite nicely in spheres of higher dimension. So, so here's an idea. Metric distortion of circles uh, at large scales is a uh, property of non-positively curved spaces or a general property of non-positively curved spaces. Okay. Let me give a definition. A circle S is a sum scaled copy of S1 with its geodesic metric. A geodesic metric space X is strongly shortcut if for some K strictly greater than one, any one Lipschitz map F into X uh, from a long enough circle as a shortcut. Okay, should think of this as being a shortcut. Um, a pair of antipodal points, P and P bar in the circle for which the um, K by Lipschitz property fails essentially for which uh, their distance in X, or the distance between their images is less than or equal to one over K times their distance in the circle. Okay. So let me give some characterizations of this property. The following conditions are equivalent. X is strongly shortcut. There exists. K greater than one could be a different K such that there is a bound on the lengths of the K by Lipschitz embedded cycles of X. And finally, no asymptotic cone of X has an isometric copy of, um, of the circle. Any questions about the definition? Okay. Um, well, what are some examples? Asymptotically cat zero spaces introduced by Carr, which includes cat zero spaces and Gromov hyperbolic spaces. Uh, 
and also SL2 are universal cover, which is something Carr showed. Uh, one skeletons of finite dimensional cat zero cube complexes. And well, that's necessary to say finite dimensional because cubes have isometrically embedded cycles and longer and longer ones for higher and higher dimensions. Um, standard Cayley graphs of Coxeter groups. That's via Niblo Reeves cubulation. One skeletons of um, systolic and quadrant complexes, uh, coarsely injective spaces of uniformly bounded geometry. That means that our, our balls are uniformly finite for, for every R. That's joint work with Come on. And Harry? For each R, there's a bound, or there's a bound? For each R, there's a bound. If there was one bound for all R, then. Well, no, but like, if you don't ask that it grows somehow, there exists some. Function. There exists some. Yeah. Yeah. So, for example, a locally finite graph. That includes, for example, co compact. Just say local, uniformly locally finite. <laughs> You know, bounded, yeah, bounded degree. Uh, co compact heligraphs or uniformly locally finite ones more generally. Um, strange example um, real Heisenberg group, um, just by looking at the classification of, of geodesics. Uh, and so that includes, in particular, all Thurston geometries except Sol. Um, uh, we also have finite dimensional norm spaces. That's um, in a lemma of a paper of Chutz. And um, other recent exciting developments, uh, Dub Finsler Carnot groups in which all length minimizers are normal. That's for people who might know what that means. Um, and that was done by Enrico Ladon and his student, Adu. And uh, in particular, that includes something called subramanian filiform groups, which is noteworthy because uh, they have um, polynomial, arbitrarily high polynomial Dane function degree. Okay, so there, there are lots, lots and lots of spaces satisfying this property. Um, I, it, 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 it works in all dimensions. Yeah. Um, um, and and it, both, both by just um, using the asymptotic cone characterization and, and uh, using classification of um, geodesics. Um, and, uh, and also, I, I, I believe those are also examples of things in which all length minimizers are normal. So, um, fun. I'm not mis if I'm not mistaken. 
Okay, let's talk about uh, group actions. A group G is strongly shortcut if it acts properly, uh, co-boundedly. When I say properly, I mean metrically properly on a strongly shortcut space. Okay, such, such an action implies um, finite generation. Um, but in the case of a strong shortcut space, um, we get more any strongly shortcut group has um, finite presentation and um, polynomial isoparameter function. Okay, and um, the idea to prove that is, well, you have a, a cycle, you know that there exists a shortcut. And because it's, because this is shorter by a uniform constant factor, uh, these two cycles that you now get are shorter by uniform constant factor. And you continue. They have shortcuts. But they're still long. And then the new cycles you get have shortcuts. And so on and so on. And um, after a logarithmic number of steps, our cycles are now too short. Um, and there's a recurrence relation, simple recurrence relation you can check that shows that by the time our cycles become too short to apply the strong shortcut condition, um, we've got polynomially many of them. That's What's the group that the polynomial exponential function that's not a strong shortcut? Do you know what? Uh, so, sorry, say so, no group that, that's not strongly shortcut but has polynomial exponential function. Um, okay, so another concept, that's, that's a good, that segues me into what I, what I have to say next. So um, that's, it's, it's, I'm gonna push it to 20 seconds from now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but that's, yeah, that's a great question. Okay, so in fact, uh, by Gromov's mesh condition, I don't know if it's called this, I, I call it this. Uh, well, let me see. Strongly shortcut groups uh, have simply connected asymptotic cones. Okay, so, and that implies um, my work of Papasoglu uh, that they have linear isodiametric function and my work of Tim Riley that they have linear Filling length function. Um, but there are examples known uh, of groups with polynomial chain function that, um, uh, that do not have, that have some non simply connected asymptotic cones. So those ones cannot be strongly shortcut. Yeah, that was, that was, a, that was a question, right? Because um, so this, this, you know, simply connected asymptotic cones also implies polynomial Dane function. And it was a question uh, whether or not the two are equivalent. And um, yeah. I do mean linear. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Other questions? Yeah. You know the relationship to uh, come on, like sends this beta house worth close distance that he called like the grand left the compound the curvature. You know the relationship between that and strongly shortcut. I, I think I think the Heisenberg group pro probably rules out uh, stable intervals. What's sorry? It's like the great grandmother of the curve. Well, you know. I, I, I like to call it a, a lower bound, but but not a greatest lower bound. So, um, yeah. Okay. Um, well, let me let me give some examples of strongly 
shortcut groups, uh, which some of them are going to follow immediately from from our list of uh, examples of, of strongly shortcut spaces. We have cat zero groups, hyperbolic groups, Kelly groups. Again, that's from joint work with Toma and Harry, uh, systolic and quadric groups. So in particular, maybe leave that there. In particular, um, small cancellation groups. Yeah, thanks. Finally, finally, finally presented small cancellation groups. Yeah. Um, discrete Eisenberg group, because it's a lattice in the real Eisenberg group. Um, and also hierarchically, hyperbolic groups, um, same collaboration, Soma and Harry, uh, including the um, mapping class groups, synthesis. And I wanna just add here that um, these subramanian filiform groups uh, they're they're an infinite family uh, that have uniform lattices, and uh, the presentations are quite uh, natural. So this these, this family of groups um, showed up in a paper of Bombslag, Miller, and Short. We're all see some some time ago. The nilpotent group um, GC generated by uh, the letters A1 up to AC and T, where the relations are that the AI and AJ all commute, and that AI conjugated by T is equal to AI, AI plus one, or I going from one up to C minus one, and then um, for C, well, um, they just uh, T, T and AC commute. So these are all strongly shortcut and they have Dane function N to the C plus one. So, and this is again from this work of um, uh, Ladon and, and Padu. And um, yeah, that's all I have to say. So, uh, so, yeah. so you mentioned that the norm, finite dimension norm space uh, uh, from Shukat. Yeah. Uh, what about like the back of space is complex field and it's by constant to that? It's a great, it's a great question. Um, I think I only ever briefly thought about that, but that's, yeah, so one, one, let's see. So the asymptotic cone, you know, if the asymptotic cone also has a convex geodesic by cone, well, yeah, okay, there's not, there's non-uniqueness, right? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know, but I think that's, yeah, definitely worth looking into. <laughs> well, what what's the what's the Dane function? Yeah. So what about we mentioned some nilpotent groups? Are there nilpotent groups where it's open? Are there counterexamples? Any anything other than anything than what's uh, other than what's covered here is is. But there's no open. you don't know an example not strong for short term. It's yeah, it's it's widely open whether or not. Uh, so that's equivalent to asking, is there is there an S1 inside of a Carnot group uh, by the asymptotic cone characterization? Um, and uh, um, well, it's, okay, it's not it's not exactly equivalent, but but that but that's that and that's 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 widely open, yeah. And 
like world experts on the topic also want to know. So, uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I meant to that theme. Um, I don't know. Uh, good, good question. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Chris and Daniel Woodhouse and I have a paper where we study snowflake groups, but we were not able, or certain infinite family, but we were not able to conclude whether they're strongly shortcut or not. Just, just that they have, you know, the standard Cayley graph or the one that we studied have do have S1 in the asymptotic cone. So that model is not strongly shortcut. Uh, and yet they have simply connected asymptotic cones. Um, if those, if they, if they are strongly shortcut, then the answer would be no, I guess, but um, I'm not sure if that's true or not. So, yeah. Yes. Firstly, what, in your opinion, is the most uh, pressing uh, example that you'd like to see uh, proven to have short, strong, short cut uh, property? You don't know how to do it. You're not looking at it. Not anyways. <laughs> the second, my second question is more specific, just to kind of throw you off your feet. <laughs> Uh, if I take a two-dimensional uh, finally presented group and I take a finally presented subgroup of it, um, does that preserve the strongly shortcut uh, property? A two-dimensional finally presented group and it's strongly shortcut. And you want to know if you take a finally generated, finally presented subgroup. Finally presented subgroup. That preserves strongly shortcut property. You have to answer my question. <laughs> Um, I, I, well, one way to answer your first question is nil, nilpotent groups. Um, yeah, are they, are they all strongly shortcut? And I think, I think, you know, my, my, my sense is that maybe, maybe the asymptotic cone is the right direction to answer that question, um, which is sort of outside of my area of expertise. So, um, so if there are Carnot, group experts here. Um, yeah. Um, and your second question, I, I, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know the answer. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. That's yeah. Good. Question. I was thinking, my dad, 